Good morning. Today is Monday, March 25th, 2024. Today is Shushan Purim. Today, Jerusalem is the only place in the world that celebrates Purim. So, everywhere else in the world celebrated Saturday night and Sunday, and Jerusalem celebrates Purim last night and today. Clearly, there is some special connection between Yerushalayim and Purim. So let's try to understand that. And the way I want to explain it is a little bit complicated, but the lesson that I hope we can take from it is magnificent. So in the story of the Megillah itself, the book of Esther differentiates Shushan, the city of Shushan, from everywhere else. Because everywhere else in the kingdom of Ahasuerus, the battle where the Jews defended themselves against their aggressors was on the 13th day of Adar, and they rested on the 14th of Adar. That's why we have Tainus Esther, the fast of Esther, that corresponds to the day of battle. We're fasting, we're praying, we're doing teshuva, repentance. And the 14th of Adar, the day they rested, that's the day that we celebrate. Now, this year, of course, it was different because the 13th was Shabbos, so we pushed it back to Thursday. But normally, we observe the 13th and the 14th as uh, Purim. But the Megillah tells us that in Shushan, Esther asked for another day for the Jews to defend themselves. The battle was on the 13th and the 14th, and they only rested in Shushan on the 15th. And our sages, in setting up the holiday, want us to remember that the Jews of Shushan celebrated Purim one day later than everybody else. So, they legislated that all cities all over the world that had a wall around the city at that time, at the time of the Purim story, would observe like Shushan on the 15th because the city of Shushan had a wall around it. So it's like a common denominator. Any city in the world that had a wall around it at that time would celebrate Purim on the 15th today, not the 14th yesterday. The problem with that was, at that time, remember, the Purim story occurred after the destruction of the first temple, while the Jews were in exile in Bavel, Babylonia, but at this time it was called Persia because the Persian Empire had taken over. The second base on Migdash, the Bayashani, had not yet been built. So the land of Israel was desolate. And at the time of the Purim story, there were no cities in Israel that had a wall around them because all of the fortified cities had been destroyed in the conquest of the Babylonians to destroy the, second base of, the first base of Migdash, like Yerushalayim. There was no wall around it because it had been destroyed. And therefore, our sages said, it would be a bizoyon, it would be embarrassing, shameful, that there would be cities, different places in the world that had a wall around it at the time of the Purim story, and they're going to observe <coughs> Purim the next day on the 15th, and not a single city in Israel would have that honor. Not a single city in Israel would observe Purim on the 14th, but just the 15th like everywhere else. That would be a bizoyon. That would be shameful and embarrassment to the land of Israel. So, the rabbis amended the standard. They amended the standard and they said, that any city in the world that had a wall around it at the time Yehoshua led the Jewish people into the land of Israel just after Moshe died, that kind of a city observes Purim on the 15th, 
Shushan Purim, and not on the 14th. Now, that date, right, that standard was about 800 years earlier than the Purim story. After the Jews had traveled for 40 years through the desert, Moshe died, Yoshua left them in, Whatever, whichever cities in Israel had a wall around them at that time when Yehoshua came in, those are the cities that are going to observe Purim like Shushan, that is Shushan Purim, to observe Purim on the 15th and not like us and everywhere else on the 14th. So that answer is a little bit complicated, but it also leads to several questions. Number one, why is it necessary to remember that in Shushan they fought an extra day? Why is that an important point? Number two, why not observe Shushan Purim in Shushan? Shushan is a city in what is now Iran. To have other cities, any other city that has a wall around it will also observe it, that takes away from the uniqueness of Shushan. If the point is that something unique happened in Shushan, that's the only place that they fought on the 13th and the 14th, and they rested on the 15th, why not have Shushan Purim in Shushan alone. Why try to extend it to some other cities? Number three, why is having a wall around Shushan the unique feature that's, that, that's compared to other cities? Remember, something unique happened in Shushan. So for some reason, we want to remember that, for some reason, and for some reason we want it to be expressed elsewhere, so which detail do we choose? If the city had a wall around it at the time of Purim, I mean, it just seems like a, an arbitrary uh, uh, detail of the city. I'll, I'll give you a different idea. Shushan, I'm making this up right now. I have no idea if it's true, but it's just to give you an example. Shushan is a city that has a river that goes through it. I, again, I don't know if that's true, but I'm just, I'm making a point. Shushan is a city that has a river that goes through it. So why didn't the rabbi say any city in the world that has a river that goes through the city, you observe on the 15th and not the 14th? Or, I don't know, Shushan in Hebrew has four letters to its name. Any city in the world that has four letters to its name observes Purim on the 15th and not the 14th. I don't know. It's arbitrary. Because it had a wall around it, what does that mean? Why is that the, the, the common denominator? Number four, why is it an embarrassment to the land of Israel if every city in Israel observes Purim on the 14th? What's so bad about observing Purim on the 14th? We did it on the 14th. The whole world does it on the 14th. Everywhere in Israel outside of Yerushalayim observes it on the 14th. What would be so bad if there would not be a single city in Israel that observes Purim on the the, the, why shouldn't they all observe Purim on the 14th? What's so bad about that? That we have to have at least one city in Israel that observes on the 15th. And the most fundamental question is, again, practically, Shushan Purim is observed only in Yerushalayim. Last night, they read the Megillah in Jerusalem. Today, they read the Megillah. They're giving out Shalach Manos. They're observing Purim. But observing Shushan Purim in Yerushalayim on the 15th has no Purim reason. There is no connection between Purim and Yerushalayim because Yerushalayim did not have a wall around it at the time of Purim. Yes, it had a wall around it at the time Yoshua came in 800 years earlier. But it turns out that there's no connection. We're trying to make this connection between Purim and Yerushalayim, and in fact, there is no connection. Even more than that, why in the world would we have Purim observed by different Jewish communities on different days? The whole concept of Purim, remember, the famous words of Esther, Lech Kenosis Kol Yudim, gather together all the Jews, a sense of unity, a sense of oneness, to pray to Hashem. 
And we talked about this so many times. If that's the main theme of Purim, why have it? These Jews do it this day and those Jews do it that day. What, wouldn't it be more important to have everybody celebrating Purim on the same day? Again, practically, as I said before, Yerushalayim is the only place in the world where Purim is observed on the 15th. Now, parenthetically, I will point out to you that there are questions about that. Does it refer only to the city that is enclosed with the wall, meaning is that only the old city? Is it the metropolitan area? Do you have to be have the old city visible from where you're standing? What about some of the suburbs of Yerushalayim, like Bayat Vagan or Ramot, do they observe on the 14th or do they observe on the 15th? Okay, there's a lot of discussion about that. But the bottom line is that it's only in Yerushalayim. Which part of Yerushalayim? Uh, but it's only in Yerushalayim. But let's try to figure this out. What's the deal with Shushan Purim? This standard about a city that was surrounded by a wall at the time Yehoshua led the Jewish people into Israel. This is a standard that we find in several other places. In fact, the Mishnah says that a city that had a wall around it from the time Yehoshua entered the land of Israel has a higher level of Kedusha, a higher level of sanctity than other cities in Jerusalem, than other cities in Israel, I'm sorry, than other cities in Israel. Why? Why in Israel? It has nothing to do with Purim now, right? We're talking about from the time of Yoshua, 800 years earlier. Why should it be that cities that have a wall around it at the time that Yoshua came in should have a higher level of Kedusha than other cities. So I want to share with you the answer that is given in the Mishnah by the Bartanura, one of the classic commentators to the Mishnah. He writes as follows. Ukishakavash Yehoshua Sa'aretz. When Yehoshua conquered the land of Israel, entered and conquered the land of Israel, Kidesh Ayaros Shohayumukafos Choma Biyamov he, gave, he sanctified, he established a higher level of kedusha of sanctity inside those cities that had a wall around it at that time. And there were other cities. Remember famously the city of Jericho, Jericho had a wall around it. Well, it lost the wall, but, but originally it had a wall. There were other cities that had walls around it at that time. Why? Sheyiyu kemachane Yisrael because these cities that were surrounded by a wall had the visible appearance of the Jewish camp traveling through the desert. Remember, when the Jews traveled through the desert in formation, and we've discussed this before, of course, they were unified by the fact that there was nothing around them, right? They're in the middle of the desert. And they had a formation. It was a tight formation, a very clear formation the Torah tells us about. And remember our sages tell us while they were traveling through the desert that the Jewish people reached the level ki'ish echad belave echad, like one person with one heart, a level of unity among the Jewish people that was unknown any time before that and has been unknown any time since. The greatest level of unity, commonality of purpose, harmony among the Jewish people that has ever or will ever exist. That's what the Machane Yisrael represented. That's what the camp traveling through the desert represented. And now Yeshua brings them into the land of Israel. So now the Jewish people are going to be spread all over this country, all over this place. But when Yeshua saw a city with a wall around it, he saw that the people who would live there could be misyache there. They could have a greater sense of unity by being surrounded by this wall. 
A wall around the city can create a sense of comfort and safety, but closeness with each other, as opposed to like urban sprawl where, you know, uh, you have your house here and a couple blocks down another house and another house. And okay, we may know each other, but when you're inside a walled city, you're unified to a much higher level. And Yoshua saw that the cities that had walls around them inside Israel could be like a visual reminder of the Jewish people while they were so united in the desert and tried to hold on to that sense of being unified, commonality of purpose, harmonious. It was a visual reminder of that crucial character. Shushan Purim does not relate primarily to the second day of the battle on the 14th and then resting on the 15th. That detail of the story only leads to the form of how we mark it. But the primary reason for Shushan Purim is to remember Shushan. And let's remember what we know about Shushan. Shushan is the place where the Jews committed the sin that our sages in the Talmud tell us led to the decree of Haman, where the Jews participated in the festive meal of Achashverosh. That happened in Shushan. That was the Jews of Shushan. And Shushan was also the place where that sin was fixed. When Esther says the following famous words to Mordechai, Lech Kenosis Kol HaYudim, go and gather all of the Jewish people of Shushan and gather together and pray and fast and engage in repentance. And with that merit, I will be able to go to the king to plead for mercy. And that's what starts the path of what leads to the downfall of Haman, the triumph of Mordechai and Esther, and the redemption of the Jewish people. Lech Kenosis Kol Yudim. And that happened in Shushan. That was the Jews of Shushan. The fact that there was a wall around Shushan at that time is not just an incidental piece of the geography, The wall around Shushan was the visible expression of the concept that saved the Jewish people, like Kenosis Kol Hayudim. The Jews of Shushan could look around them and see this wall and feel this sense that we are connected. And that visible image, the wall around the city, reminds us of the secret of our triumph. And I've shared this before. More powerful than any external threat. More powerful than the destruction of the temple. Than the Inquisition from Spain. Than the Nazis. Than Hamas. Than Haman. Than Ahasuerus. More powerful than any of that is our internal unity. If we have that We will always triumph. And that's why Purim is so relevant to our times, especially today. We discussed this over the last several days. Because this is truly our secret weapon for whatever we face as a people. And thus the wall around Shushan is not just an arbitrary detail of city planning that made Shushan unique. Rather, it was the meaningful, visible symbol of the tikkun, of what fixed the terrible sin. And that's why other cities with a wall follow Shushan, because those cities likewise have this visible reminder of what it was that caused our dramatic triumph. So when our sages chose the standard of a walled city in order to be like Shushan, it wasn't an arbitrary standard, but it was the thematic connection specifically relating to cities 
with a wall around it. And therefore, there had to have been a city like that in Israel because that is precisely the significance of the greater sanctity of walled cities in Israel. That is exactly why the two are the same. The higher Kedusha that Yehoshua bestowed 800 years earlier on those cities that had a wall around them is precisely the same concept as Esther understood in Shushan, Lake Kenosis Kol Ayudim. We have to be unified. We have to be together. And therefore, since there was no city with a wall from the time of Shushan, it had to have been from the time of Yoshua. And it made perfect sense because those two concepts are parallel. They're congruent. And that's why a city in Israel that had a wall around it from the time of Yehoshua became the standard, and that is the meaningful way in expressing the same sentiment as what happened in Shushan, Lech Kenosis Kol Yudim, when we're gathered together, no one can overcome us. Practically speaking today, there is only one city in the world that expresses this, and that's Yerushalayim. The city which is Mechaber, which connects and gathers together all of the Jewish people. That's why Yerushalayim must celebrate Purim in a unique way, unlike anywhere else. And by the way, if you're in Israel, even if you observe Purim Saturday night and Sunday, if you have the opportunity to go to Purim today, you can observe Purim today. You can still observe Purim. Well, I don't know if you can get a flight now. But if you were in Tel Aviv, on uh, Saturday night and Sunday, Sunday night you could travel to, to, to Yerushalayim and celebrate Purim there on the 15th because it's a unique celebration and because it relates to the identity of Yerushalayim, of Jerusalem. The famous verse in Tehillim, Yerushalayim habnuya ki'ir shechubra lo yachtav. Jerusalem is a city that is united together. There are at least two meanings of that verse. A city that because it has a wall around it, the old city has a wall around it, does not appear like disparate, distant suburban houses, but chubra, connected, joined, unified. But also, Jerusalem is a city in which all Israel is joined, united, directed toward in our prayers and in our thoughts. Listen to the words of the Talmud Yerushalmi. Jerusalem is ir, shihi osa, kal Yisrael lechaverim. Jerusalem is the city that creates that every single Jewish person is a chaver a friend, a fellow, connected. We here in Montreal and other places, we celebrate Purim on the 14th, Saturday night and Sunday this year. But even here today, it is Shushan Purim. It is a day of note. We change the prayers somewhat. We omit Tachanun. It's a nice thing for a person to have a little bit nicer of a festive meal today. Because even though our celebration is on the 14th, we should still take note and appreciate that today is Shushan Purim. And that means to realize what Jerusalem means to every one of us. A number of years ago, Two men came from the United States to Israel. They wanted to make a film about Zionism. They met a young man who was a student of Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda Cook. Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda was the son of Rabbi Avraham HaKohen Cook, who was the first chief rabbi of Israel. Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda, his son, was also a great leader, scholar, teacher, They met one of his students, 
they were very impressed with this student, and this student said, let me come introduce you to our teacher, Reb Tzvi Yehuda. He's such a great, great man. They came to meet this great rabbi, and after just a few minutes of speaking to him, they realized this is a special human being. This is, uh, this, th- this is someone out of the ordinary. This is someone... This is someone that we really need to include in this film. So they said to him, we're going back to the United States for three months. We're going to gather all of our gear. We're going to come back. And when we come back, we would like to interview you for our film. Rutsi Yehuda said, fine. Three months later, they came back. And they said to him, they set up their gear, their cameras. They set everything up. They said to him, We're making a film about Zionism. We have a question. And the film will begin with you answering this question. This is how we're going to start off the film. And here's the question. This is several decades ago. Here's the question. If you, Rabbi Cook, if you were given 10 minutes and not a minute more, in order to explain your position on Zionism to the President of the United States, what would you say? Reb Tzvi Yehuda smiled at them, and then he said, this is nine minutes too long. I would only say two words. Chazarnu Habayita. We have returned to our home. Some of us have the privilege of living in our home. Others of us visit from time to time. Yet others of us have not yet visited. But for all of us, it is our home, and it binds us, and it connects us to every one of us. That is Jerusalem, and that is Shushan Purim. My friends, I wish you a wonderful day a very good and meaningful Shushan Purim. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.